So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Welcome to adding and subtracting radical expressions. Two or more radical expressions are called like radicals if they have the same index and the same radicand. Radicals that are like radicals can be added or subtracted by adding or subtracting the coefficients. So this works very similar to how we combine like terms, but now we're dealing with like radicals. So here are the guidelines that we'll follow. Number one, we'll simplify each radical. Number two, we'll identify the like radicals. And then number three, we'll add or subtract the like radicals by adding or subtracting the coefficients. Let's give it a try. Number one, these are like radicals because they're both square roots, meaning the index is two, and the radicands are both five. So that means we can go ahead and add these together by adding the coefficients. Four plus three would be seven square root five. Another way to look at this same problem would be to factor out the square root of five. If we factor the square root of five out, we'd be left with a factor of four plus a factor of three, which of course would be seven square root five. Now number two, they're both square roots, which is good, but notice their radicands are different. However, we need to simplify these before we can determine whether we can add or subtract them. So if we simplify this, 75 would be 3 times 25, or 3 times 5 times 5, minus square root of 27. Well, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. Remember, our index is 2, so we're looking for perfect square factors. There's a perfect square factor. There's a perfect square factor. So if we already have a 3 here, and this will simplify to 5, 3 times 5 would be 15 or negative 15 square root 3 minus, here we have the square root of 3 squared, that would be 3, and then we're left with square root 3. So now we do have like radicands, we can go ahead and combine these terms by subtracting the coefficients. Negative 15 minus 3 would be negative 18 square root 3. So as you can see, it's very similar to combining like terms, except we do have to simplify our radicals first. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. This one looks like it's going to be a lot more work. They're all square roots, so that's a good sign, but, but we do have to simplify all these square roots before we can add or subtract. Let's go ahead and write each radicand in prime factored form. 54 would be 6 times 9. Well, 6 is 2 times 3. 9 is 3 times 3. x to the third Again, if you can identify perfect square factors, you may be able to skip some of this work. But if you're doing this for the first time, I would recommend showing all your steps. 24 is 8 times 3. I know 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So there's the 8 times 3. 5 factors of x plus, well, 25 is a perfect square, but I'll go ahead and write it out as 5 times 5 times x times x. Again, our index is 2, so we're looking for perfect square factors. So we'll make groups of 2. There's 2 factors of 3, 2 factors of x, 2 factors of 2, 2 factors of x, 2 factors of x, and then 2 5s and 2 x's. OK, let's go ahead and write these in simplified form and then see if we have any like radicals. What we've circled here is going to simplify to 3x. The coefficient is already 4x, so 4x times 3x would be 12x squared times the square root of 6x, plus this would simplify to 2 and then x times x. So 2x squared times the 3 would give us 6x squared, square root 6x, plus this would just be 5x. So these first two terms are like radicals. Of course, this one's not. Let's go ahead and add these together. When we add our coefficients, 12x squared plus 6x squared would be 18x squared square root 6x, and then plus 5x. 
Okay, so if I lost you on the simplifying part, you may want to review the video for simplifying radicals. Let's go ahead and try one more. Again, the first step is to simplify each of these before we can determine whether they're like radicals. So the first step is to rewrite this as the square root of 15 divided by the square root of 2 plus square root of 10 divided by square root 3. We need to eliminate the square root from the denominators. So this would simplify perfectly if we had two factors of 2. So we'll multiply the numerator and denominator by square root 2. Over here, if we had two factors of 3, this would simplify perfectly. So we'll multiply this one by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. Let's see what this gives us. We're going to have the square root of 30 over the square root of 4, which would be 2, plus another square root of 30 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 would be the square root of 9, that would be 3. So our indexes are the same, they're both square roots, and the radicands are also both 30, so we can go ahead and add these, but to add these we have to have a common denominator, that should, which would be 6, so now we multiply top and bottom by 3 here and top and bottom by 2 here. So now we would have 3 square root 30 plus 2 square roots of 30 all over our common denominator of 6. One more step, 3 square root 30 plus 2 square root 30 would be 5 square roots of 30 divided by 6. Just in case you were wondering, the square root of 30 does not simplify. That would be 5 times 6 and 2 times 3. 30 does not have any perfect square factors, so that's our final answer. Okay, thank you for watching.